So the next talk up is from Heinrich Dinkel on the Red Rice team, practical sound event detection models for general audio understanding. The Red Rice submission for the HEAR challenge. Hi, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Cool, very nice. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna give like a brief talk right now uh, for my like submission, uh, like the Red Rice submission to the HEAR challenge. Uh, I'm Heinrich Dinkel, I am uh, work for Xiaomi. Uh, yeah, like, and, uh, this is like a more or less one team project. So uh, yeah, it's just me. Uh, what did I do? Uh, well, first of all, just let me introduce like the team Red Rice is just uh, the, like the sub brand of, of, uh, of our brand, like they're doing phones. So I just make a joke out of it. And uh, my model actually like, which I submitted there is called efficient latent, which I originally intended to be uh, efficient net with a BYOL, like, like a self support approach, but that failed. <laughs> uh, like actually that, that like, I don't know, the, the, just the results were not good. So like I just reverse back to my baseline where I just use an efficient net, which is trained for sound event detection or like audio tagging as right now before uh, Chiu Chang uh, from CVSSP right now uh, said like on audio set. So uh, why, why did I do it like this? Of course, obviously, I guess like a uh, uh, sound event classification is one of the most like basic human perception perception tasks that is available, right? I mean, usually like when we start like uh, living, we first try to discern between different sounds and not like first to learn how to uh, interpret or like understand speech. So uh, generally speaking, just, uh, yeah, that's the, 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 the main framework, right? Uh, what we see just on there is like the, the overall architecture, not the overall architecture, just a simplified architecture. We take a waveform, then do a Fourier transform, and then like a little bit of filtering, get a male spectrogram. And then uh, like aggregate this mouse spectrogram usually doing training like on audio sets since uh, like clips are weekly labeled. And uh, what we'll get a prediction for some of the, in this case, 527 labels. Uh, like my model is therefore uh, trained in strongly or like, sorry, strongly, but it's supervisedly trained and not like self-supervised. Uh, what I wanted to actually just emphasize in this talk, I think like, I guess it's one of the main reasons why that my, 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 my model worked, I think so well actually, is uh, just spectrums are not images. So uh, when you have like an input image, like what we usually right now do in uh, like audio set on this data set, like for a sound event detection or audio tagging is actually just doing the same pipeline more or less than uh, for, for images. So on the top, you see like, like an uh, image pipeline where you take an image, you subsample it through a network and then like you take like a, like a time frequency or like embedding level pooling that, that depends like, like how you call it or like GAP, which is like global average pooling, right? Uh, which works uh, for for images, but as I would maybe suggest suggest in my results here, like in uh, for spectrograms, it, it doesn't because you know you don't want to like mix different uh, time frequency information because for example for the for a timestamp embeddings you don't want to have like information from another uh, frequency bin in 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 some like in, in some other time step to influence your current uh, frequent like your current uh, time embedding res or time embedding information. So what I do in my, in my uh, like approach here is just like after subsampling, I do first frequency wise, like first the frequency pooling, and then I do the, the time pooling. Like, like these are two separate steps because I don't want them to be intertangled, uh, in, like intertwined, because otherwise we would get into problems, I guess. Uh, so training data was all you said, uh, I think was already like mentioned two times here, right? So two, 5,000 hours about that, that I got here right now from, and uh, yeah, uh, just standard audio set. Uh, like my model architecture is actually really off the shelf, like an efficient at B2, but anybody could actually use even a, a B0. Like they have this, for me at least, exactly the same performance more or less. And uh, like on the left, you can see like just that the, it's really like an off the shelf model. So I don't think like need to mention it uh, uh, much, I guess. And just the, the model parameters on the right side are, well, I, I use like on my input, uh, my spectrogram has a 10 millisecond uh, frame size and uh, um, mostly is like one of the ma main things about the model is just like the model is not super big like eight million parameters so not not you know you can run it on a cpu easily i mean not during training of course and uh, like the output re resolution of my model is like 320 milliseconds so a bit larger than for for others and the map on audio set as before maybe mentioned is about like in the middle is 43 dot something i forgot but it's not that high it's about about the same as uh, with one of the other contestants. And so we go to, to results, right? Um, for the results, like I think I got like four times second place and which was uh, for me, like, I guess, like not surprising for uh, for the four second places. There were 
three of them were completely in domain. So it means like, well, ESC50 and FSD50K are, uh, well, in domain uh, like tasks for my, for my model. So uh, it should perform pretty good. And, uh, but for one other task, which was Prima D, I think I also got second place, which was uh, emotion detection, which is a bit surprising to me too, like, because, uh, well, I don't think like it's like this kind of sound, uh, like weekly labeled tagging of sound events has much to do with, with emotion, but well, all right. And lastly, why did I say like the, the whole shebang thing about um, spectrograms are not images is because of the results of DK's 2016 task two. I found them like actually pretty interesting in, in my personal point of view, because so uh, like, even though, I mean, the training data set arguably is the same of my model as with uh, like sound sensing YAMnet and also right now uh, pans here and also like uh, CPG, JKSU's uh, like training data, right? But for some reason, and that's why, why I, at the beginning said like the spectrograms are not images. I think that the lower two like YAMnet and PANS fail because of uh, that they mix up like time and frequency information during the pooling aggregation. So they, their time step labels are maybe just mixed up. So they don't have like any information. I, I'm, I'm not sure of course, like if that is true, I'm just guessing that here, but I was just surprised by this result. Not because my results are explicitly good or something. It's just like that I would expect them to be somewhat you know around around at the, at, the, at the same like landmark because you know cpj uh, jku's uh, like result which is a transformer is pretty much uh, the same as mine like in terms of uh, one score i think that, that's the main metric so which also maybe suggests that uh, attention is maybe not all you need oh well uh, so that's actually like already it uh, for me sorry and uh, yeah like q a is later i know uh, well, thank you very much and thank you very much for the challenge of course